Boyhood deserves all the praise it's been getting, despite being kind of boring. I'm filming this a couple days after the Oscars, and I'm very, very upset that Boyhood did not win Best Picture. If you haven't heard of Boyhood, it's a movie directed by Richard Linklater of Slacker and Days of Confused and School of Rock that has been filmed off and on for a period of 12 years, following a young actor from age 7, I believe, to age 19. Boyhood has been making headlines during the award season, and critics everywhere are just going head over heels praising it. And despite all the praise it's been getting, just as many people are forming their own backlash, calling it, you know, boring. Because let's face it, it doesn't fit a traditionally narrative format. It doesn't have the same, you know, three-act structure or four-act structure, however you want to parse it, um, format that so many Hollywood movies like to present to us. It's very, very episodic. You go from one year to the next, charting this very organic, very believable, but also very not narratively satisfying series of moments in this boy Mason's life. Going from his mother's series of alcoholic stepfathers to her strained relationship with Ethan Hawke, her ex, from this boy's first flirtation with drinking and girls and college and, you know, finding his place in life. Basically, it's roughly the same arc that most middle-class, white, straight, cisgendered kids would go through. There is a conversation to be had about framing this universal truth through the lens of a white, cisgendered, upper-middle-class male, but uh, I'm not going to have that discussion. The discussion I want to have is why I don't think this is boring. Why it works despite not fitting a narrative structure. I'm harping on this because I know a lot of people whose main criticism was I don't need to see life in a film, I live it every day. Well, um, not quite. One thing that I feel the need to point out is that there is actually a tradition of this sort of movie. It has been done before, over much longer periods of time. The best example would probably be the series that Francois Truffaut did on the character of Antoine Duanel. Uh, the first one being The 400 Blows, and then going through five movies following that same character through different points in his life, like up until his middle age. Again, following a fictional character, but over the span of several different movies, not, you know, collecting them together into one push through maturity. But even more interesting is the Up series, a British series of documentaries following 14 kids through their adulthoods, and by now they've covered half a century of their lives. And you don't even have to go to indie film to see this. Uh, the Harry Potter series. You also get to see a bunch of young actors age over the course of a series of films. But, you know, Harry Potter has a plot. It has a story. Boyhood doesn't necessarily have a story. Of course, Linklater never really seemed comfortable with the traditional story format. I'll look at his first film, Slacker. Equally episodic, but instead of covering 12 years, it covers a single 24-hour period in Austin. And this isn't the only time he's actually played around with time. Look at his Before series. He's very interested in using film as captured time. He's certainly not the only one who does this, but he's definitely made it one of his main motifs, one of his main tools. I think the biggest problem that I have with Boyhood is that Linklater left the key to watching it in one of his other movies. Boyhood started production in 2002, the year before this movie came out, Waking Life. Like Slacker, Waking Life is also a series of people spouting various degrees of interesting philosophy, only it's rotoscoped and animated. This is a couple years before Linklater really fine-tuned his rotoscoping technique in A Scanner Darkly. So there are a lot of rough edges to it, but I think it's definitely worth the watch, in particular for this one scene. These two guys are sitting down, and one of them starts explaining the film theories of André Bazin. And, you know, Bazin is like a Christian, so he, like, believes that, you know, God, obviously, and that, like, everything... He believes, for him, reality and God are the same, you know, like... And so what film is actually capturing is, like, God incarnate, creating. Now listen to Linklater's reading of Bazan here. You know, like, like this moment, you know, it's holy. But like we walk around like it's not holy. We walk around like, you know, there are some holy moments and there are all the other moments that are right. not holy, right? right? But like this moment's holy, right? And I feel like film can let us see that, you know, can just frame it so that we see like, ah, this moment, you know, holy. And it's like holy, 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 moment by moment. So taking a piece out of time and making it holy. What I find most interesting about Boyhood's production is that it's a period piece made in the period it was shot. Linklater's done period pieces before. 
Dazed and Confused was about the 70s, but it was shot in the 90s. Me and Orson Welles took place in the 30s, but it was shot in the 2000s. But in Boyhood, the first scenes take place in 2002, and they were shot in 2002, and there are little things around the edges that make you realize that this is 2002. Same for 2003, 2004, 2005, and on and on and on, up until now. It's doing exactly what Bazan was describing. It's taking these moments of time, these moments of history, not just the personal history of Mason and his family, but the history of our society, and just saying, this is now, this is now, holy, holy, holy. It's basically a shared family album of fictional characters. Now, Bazan was a French critic who thought that this immediacy in film was what set it apart from other mediums. In the ontology of the photographic image, Andre Bazan cited family albums as a prime example of what photography can do. Family albums preserve moments in time, not with the prestige of an art form, but with a simple, mechanical process. Bazan wrote, Photography does not create eternity, as art does. It embalms time, rescuing it simply from its proper corruption. To use another Linklater movie as an example, film is high school kids, and we are all Matthew McConaughey. I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> so now, 12 years of Eller Coltrane's life will stay the same age. Whether you think they're boring or profound, these moments have been preserved. More interestingly, they're preserved in a way that makes you think about their preservation. Of course, they are documenting a fictional family, so there is that layer you have to deal with. Boyhood has the freedom of fiction, so it could potentially have made its story as wild as possible. But do we really need that? Do we really need a powerful throughline and a strong narrative to actually make it work? I mean, that's what we're all trained to look for in movies. Not just as audience members, but as writers and directors and cinematographers. A strong story, fine finish, all loose ends tied up in a neat little bow. Poetic justice in two and a half hours, because you can go a lifetime without getting poetic justice. But maybe it's in seeking a narrative that we cause our own unhappiness. One of the climatic scenes, and one of the most powerful, and probably the one that got Patricia Arquette her Oscar, is this one. You know what I'm realizing? My life is just gonna go. Like that. This series of milestones. Mason's mother's worst day of her life. Getting my master's degree. Finally getting the job I wanted. Sending Samantha off to college. Sending you off to college. You know what's next? Huh? It's my fucking funeral! She's gone through the steps of raising a child and can't look forward to any new landmarks. She doesn't have a narrative anymore. Because again, we like easy narratives. Boyhood doesn't have one. The kid in Boyhood doesn't grow up to defeat Lord Voldemort through a series of subclauses and wand ownership. Harry Potter had a weird ending. <laughs> but he does grow up to become a fuller, more independent, more insightful, more mature person than he was at age seven. And that itself is beautiful. It's constant. The moments, it's just, it's like it's always right now, you know? <laughs> Maybe we should look at life as a series of moments. Maybe we should just rejoice in the now that we live in. But again, there's that refrain, if I wanted to see life in a movie, I'd live it. Yeah, but you can't live 12 years in three hours. Boyhood is a great movie because of how it compresses time. More importantly, it reminds us to recognize how we create our own narratives, how we organized our past and our futures. Like Mason's mother, we have a tendency to think that our lives only have worth if there's a set path to them, if there are predetermined plot points because those are the kinds of things that make it into movies, and therefore, those are the things that have importance. And in desperately seeking that grand narrative structure, we forget how beautiful now is. That it is always, always, always now. Well, okay, now is not now for me because I recorded this a couple days before I put it online, and it's entirely possible you're watching this several months after I put it online, so now is not now, now is back when I was recording this. Uh, okay, the now is gone. It's, it's not now anymore. Um, uh, I don't know if it's now where you are.